water swept through Essini. Its face is battered and still smolders. The fighting has passed inland, leaving much to remember it by. The church steeple has been holed by shells sent in to dislodge German snipers. Villagers begin to trickle back, threading their way along the bomb and shell-shattered streets. Isigny on the Cherbourg Peninsula was captured by American troops after fierce fighting. Germans captured in the village lounge against the wall of the Café du Port. Subconsciously, they adopt the pose of Normandy fishermen, who had the right to sun themselves in their favourite meeting place. Isigny has had to pay a heavy price for liberation, but its days of German domination are over. There are many helping hands to be found in the village today. The German parasites have been driven out. There are men here now who go out of their way to bring what cheer they can in advance of more substantial help and relief. A few hangdog prisoners brought out of hiding are swept up and marched out of the village. The work of Allied relief and rehabilitation commences. A loudspeaker van brings advice to the citizens, telling them what plans are being made for their immediate assistance. Food is handed out, a refreshing change after four years of being robbed. The doughboys really love granny. We head out now over the German flooded defences towards Caronton. Vast areas were inundated when the Germans opened the sluice gates which control the flood water. This too is in the American sector of operations. While moving up to the attack, a halt is called and troops tumble into the roadside for a momentary rest. A short spell before the opposing forces clashed in a particularly fierce battle in which airborne troops of the American 101st Division distinguished themselves. The main place in Caronton with its memorial bedecked with Allied flags. Service and usual cameramen were soon in the town after it had fallen. There was fighting still going on on the outskirts when the people of Caronton came out of their cellars in which they had been sheltering to greet their liberators. been badly knocked about by the artillery of both sides. Many of the houses were burning for hours after its release. The local fire brigade had more fires than it could cope with. There were calls for more water pressure and the pumping party had to put a jerk in it. We make a commentary switch now to the other flank of our bridgehead for the purpose of expanding our previous account of the work done by the 6th British Airborne Division. Holding the canal line north of Caen to Westrum, they have smashed all attacks by the 12th Panzer Division and established a foothold across the river Orne. It might almost be said that they have a war of their own. Nothing will make them loosen their grip on that superbly one sector. There's another Normandy village now in our hands, Saint-Marie-du-Mont. One more stepping stone in the Allied advance. The German lines are subjected to a heavy pounding in preparation for our move to cut the peninsula.
British tank units come out of the line for a well-earned rest after heavy fighting outside Caen. It was certainly great news when we heard that the 7th British Armoured Division, the Desert Rats, is in action in France. Battle-seasoned warriors of the British Army are to be found along many a Normandy road, and the Germans don't like it. They know to their cost what it is to come in contact with them. This is the much disputed town of Montbourg. One day in German hands, the next occupied by the Allies. The captured motorcycle half-track has had many owners. The Americans use it now, but shortly after these pictures were taken, the Germans counter-attacked and the town changed hands again. But here's a real live German doodlebug in good working order. A remote-controlled midget tank with its explosive charge removed, giving a demonstration for the cameraman's benefit. Canadian Public Relations Headquarters has to evacuate the building they occupied following a German shell burst which set the place on fire. It's a slow burn affair, so the exit is orderly, if not dignified. The midday chow line in the Normandy farmyard. The army cook here has a nice frontline menu. Admittedly, he has to draw on tinned food, but it's just possible that there may be a change any day now. Road junction on the national highway between Caen and Bayeux. There's not a thing about French roads that the old PBI can't tell you. Four years after to the day, General de Gaulle returns to France. Nothing could do more to encourage the French people than a visit to liberated territory by the man who has done so much to uphold the spirit of resistance in his country. This is indeed an historic occasion and one full of portent for the people of France. The old Norman town of Bayeux, the first place of any size to be liberated by the Allies, gives him an ardent greeting. In the words of correspondents on the spot, General de Gaulle moved in an atmosphere of intense fervour. He walked through the streets followed by a great throng of admiring citizens. They press around him on all sides. The tall figure of the general stopping here and there for a word or to receive some small token of salutation. Speaking with noticeable emotion, General de Gaulle saluted the liberated town of Bayeux in the name of the government of France. Two days later, the king made a surprise visit to the Normandy beaches. General Montgomery, the commander-in-chief, is there to welcome his majesty and escort him to 21st Army Group headquarters. Here indeed was convincing proof of our solid lodgment in France. It was during this momentous visit that the king held an investiture in the field. His majesty decorated army officers on the shores where William the Conqueror made plans for the invasion of England. The first officer to be decorated was the commander of the 3rd Canadian Division, which has been in the thickest of the fighting all the way from the beaches. From the men formed up on three sides of a square on the overgrown lawn, there comes a burst of cheering. The King's departure was made after a day full of incident. The Allied troops were not alone in their appreciation of the royal visit. Many French voices were heard calling, Long live the King of England! It was a day to be remembered. <laughs> 